Parasitic worms are simple, right? You'd think they were just a hollow tube causing massive inconvenience and disease to higher organisms like us. So I decided to collect a parasitic worm from work and make a slide to look at its organs. I removed this particular parasite from a dog's intestine. It's an adult female Toxicara canis and it has a brain, an intestinal tract, a reproductive tract and loads of other interesting structures including this bizarre giant cell which took me ages to work out what it was. Want to find out more? As usual, you can find the digital version of this slide on the website at downthescope.co.uk. There's a direct link in the video description. Before we get into the anatomy and histology, a bit of background. Toxicara canis belongs to the phylum Nematoda, which is a huge group of organisms, some of which are parasitic. Toxicara is an ascarid, or round worm, making it closely related to human parasites like Ascaris lumbricoides. Adults live in the gastrointestinal tract of dogs, or other canids like foxes, where they shed eggs in the faeces. Eggs are ingested by other dogs and larvae hatch out in the gut. In puppies, larvae penetrate the gut wall and travel in the blood to the lungs, where they wiggle into the alveoli, follow the bronchi back to the trachea, and are coughed up, swallowed, and undergo their final molt to become adults ready to produce more eggs. In older animals, the larvae migrate to different tissues and arrest their development. If that animal subsequently becomes pregnant, the larvae emerge and re-establish infection in the gut, ready to produce more eggs and infect the newborn puppies either in the faeces or via the milk or placenta. All of this complex behaviour must be regulated by some kind of nervous system. Starting at the head, we can spot some neurons. These ones look quite similar to neurons in other animals, such as earthworms, fish and even mammals. Nematodes like Toxicara have what's known as a simplified nervous system that contains about 300 neurons. The neurons are connected by axons or nerve fibres. At the head, these form a ring called the circumoral brain, also known as the nerve ring which we can see here. Toxicara also have a ventral nerve cord made up of cell bodies and axons. These cell bodies give off processes which travel to the nerve ring or to a dorsal nerve cord via commissures. Nematodes have a sensory system which is mainly concentrated in the head and consists of a variety of sensors for heat, chemicals or touch. These are often located next to the mouth in two pits called amphids. The sensory neurons in front of the nerve ring send dendrites to connect with the receptors and axons which enter the nerve ring to connect with other neurons. Motor neurons are located in the ventral nerve cord. In other animals, neurons in the spinal cord or nerve cord send out axons which synapse on distant muscles. In nematodes, the system is entirely different. Each muscle cell sends a thin process called a muscle arm to the ventral nerve cord, where it synapses with a motor neuron and makes connections with other muscle arms for coordinated, smooth movement. The muscles themselves are located just under the worm's cuticle and form a complete ring. Toxicara only has a single layer of longitudinal muscle fibres that travel from head to tail. These are huge cells with massive nuclei. Unlike muscle fibres in other animals, the contractile cytoskeleton doesn't fill all the cell cytoplasm, leaving these large, clear spaces inside the cell. Instead of skin, nematodes have a cuticle. This is an important structural component, but is also the interface with the external environment, making it an important part in invading the host immune system. The cuticle is organised into layers with different protein components, although most of the cuticle is made up of collagen, which is secreted by cells in the hypodermis. This is similar to the collagen in other animals like humans, but has some structural differences. Toxicara goes through several larval life stages. As the larva grows into an adult, a new cuticle must be produced at each stage with molting of the old cuticle. Underneath the muscle layer, Toxicara has a pseudocelon. This is not a true body cavity like your abdomen because it's not lined by peritoneum. However, it is filled with fluid which acts as a hydrostatic skeleton, giving the muscles something to push against and move the worm's body. In the centre of most sections, there's an intestinal tract. The first part of the tract is the stomodium, consisting of a mouth, pharynx and esophagus. Once we're past the pharynx, the early intestinal cells are large columnar with very prominent microvilli. They have very granular cytoplasm. Notice how there's no muscle layers to push the content along the gut as you would find in other animals. Perhaps they rely on movement of the external muscles to move content through. You can see that the appearance of the intestinal cells doesn't really change from mouth to midgut to anus. The last part of the tract is the proctodium. Although this appears to be an anatomical division, 
rather than a functional one. Everything else you can see in the pseudocelom is reproductive tract. This particular worm was a female. Each female has two ovaries, two oviducts and two uteri. The ovary is surrounded by a thin layer of cells with developing ugonia inside. As the ugonia develop, they move down the ovary towards an oviduct, which has a similar appearance to the ovary but has a central lumen. When ugonia develop into oocytes and are ready for fertilisation, they move into the uterus. Here we can see the uterus is filled with thousands of developing eggs. There are even some which contain developing larvae, such as this one here. Unlike the intestine, the uterus has a muscular wall for moving eggs down to the vagina and vulva for release into the environment. Remember that huge cell in the head of the Toxicara canis? It took me ages to work out what it was. At first I thought it was a massive neuron, but I couldn't have been more wrong. Finally, I stumbled across a paper which had this small paragraph. The system consists of a single excretory gland cell. The excretory gland reaches its largest size at the level of the esophageal region. A large nucleus, about 30 micrometers in diameter, is located at the posterior third of the esophageal region. Based on this, I believe this is the excretory gland cell, also called a rinette. It's a single massive cell with multiple functions, including production, excretion and secretion of a range of bioactive products. These products might degrade host tissues, enabling parasite penetration and migration or feeding. But there are a range of other functions, including interacting with and modulating the host's immune system, as well as antimicrobial activity within the host's gastrointestinal system. These molecules are secreted into an intracellular duct that empties into a larger duct, which leads to the outside via the excretory pore. The Renette cell also sends out extensions which travel along the length of the worm's body. These lateral excretory canals might collect waste products or have some role in osmoregulation. No one's really sure what the relative role of these cells is to excretion and osmoregulation, since other sites, such as the gut and cuticle, have been proposed to carry out these roles more effectively. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to some more content on histology and anatomy of animals. If you're interested in other parasites, why not check out this video about sheep keds, a curious type of insect that gives birth to a single larva at a time. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.